Well, good morning. TT here. Today, the target species is Eastern Rock Blackfish, or better known as Drummer. And uh, we're going to head outside. I've just dropped in at Kernel Boat Ramp. Going to head around to the the outside area and fish the foreshores, and uh, right in close and tight to the to the rocks. Uh, normally, uh, the guys who target Drummer fish from the rocks and fish out. Well, I'm going to be fishing from the boat and fishing in. Hopefully, it'll give me a bit of an edge. If I do hook up to a drummer, I'll be able to pull them away from the rocks. Where if I'm up on the rocks, I'll actually be pulling it into the rocks. Uh, a little bit trickier, a little bit tougher, but uh, this is a whole lot of fun. Most important thing, uh, preparation, key is to check your weather first. We've got a light five knot westerly happening at the moment, and it should do most of that for the morning. So it means that I'm gonna be protected behind the cliffs. The swell's only 1.1, dropping down from 1.3 yesterday, so it's a really good opportunity to get nice and close to the rocks, get into those ledges that even rock fishermen can't get to. And where we're gonna be fishing, very high cliff face, so guys can fish from up the top, but it makes it almost impossible to land your fish. So I'll be coming in, fishing those areas which are a little bit further out, areas where there's some nice pockets, some deep gutters, lots of uh, green weed, and lots of kelp on the bottom so you know I might lose a little bit of gear but I'll have a lot of fun well let's get out there I'll show you all the tackle and the way that I, uh, I set up I'll show you the baits that I use and I'll show you how to catch one of these beautiful Eastern Rock Blackfish okay here we go we've got the big high cliffs Lots of foam and white water. The tide's actually coming in at the minute. And I've just uh, spot locked it. The little anchor there on the Minn Kota, so it's working up the front. So I don't have to anchor with a with a reef pick, some chain, and uh, you don't have to worry about the, the getting snagged bit as well. So I can sit right here. It's a northwesterly, so she's blowing out this way. to keep me away, as well as the Minn Kota twirling away there itself. And these things are amazing. I'll give you a look at it in a second. But really important if you want to do wash fishing. And you have to know what the swell is, you have to know what the wind direction is and uh, whether it's going to pick up through the day. Really important to ensure your safety. I've got life jackets right here beside me. It's the old type, ready to slip straight on. And I've got another one that I'm actually going to be putting on right now. Right here, a waste one. So I'll actually slide that on right now. And all I have to do is pull the cord. It'll, uh, it'll inflate. And I'll put it over my head and wrap it around. So, you know, safety is crucial when you're fishing in this sort of country. I'll... Uh, I'll spend a bit of time now just making sure that uh, we've got everything ready and we just sit here for a minute. We've got to watch the waves, see that the waves or the swell's not picking up too much, throwing me in on the white water to right here. So it's uh, a pretty good spot. I can easily get a cast in all that foam and that's the foam that the drummer are going to be sitting in. All this stuff here. So without the spot lock, I wouldn't be here. Right, I think we're sitting pretty nice. We haven't really moved at all, so I'll slide this life jacket on and then I'll show you how to rig up. Um, I'm going to be looking at using these Saragosas, and I've got 50 pound braid on and uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon trace at the moment. I can probably up that to 30 pound, but. Um, Tied that on with a nice FG knot. You can see plenty of line there, and the FG knot is super tiny. So pretty strong. And I've bought a few different style of Shimano rods. And I've also got, uh, besides the reels, I've got a number of floats as well. So you can use these types of floats, work particularly well smaller the better, whatever you can get away with. I might have to give one of these a go. I want something nice and small. 
ball. I'll have to probably put it on first. Now as far as rods go, it's beautiful Shimano rods here. Heavy you want to go. This is an Osea plugger, so it's actually used casting uh, stick baits and hoppers around. So a very stiff, but enough whip on the end to get a cast into this area behind me here. So number one's location. After you've picked your species, you've got to find a location that you're going to be able to catch these fish in. Get out of the boat. This section right here, I'll be able to get long casts in. I'll be able to get some burley thrown in there as well and I've bought, bought about four or five loaves of bread so I can mash that up, hurl that in and I've just got to pick the rod. I've got a grappler here as well, super strong. Again you can cast your, your poppers and things around but drummer, whilst they don't grow as big as giant trevally or some of those bigger sport fish, are incredibly powerful. All right, we've also got uh, another heavy Shimano combo. This is a eight to fifteen kilo stick. So very powerful. Probably use it more for kings and Jew than the pigs here. And then I've got a nice light one, another Shimano, and this one here is a uh, Aero Wave, surf car 6 to 12 kilo, so 6 kilo means it's going to be pretty light on the, on the end, it's a nice long rod, and I want to get a good cast in there, so a long rod can help. And uh, this one here might be the first cab off the rank. So you get a nice long cast in there, and then you can angle the fish however you want it. So if it seems to be going over here where there's a bit more rock and rubble, well, you can really load it up. And I think I'll give this one a go first up. Six kilo up at the, the whippy end. And heavy duty down at the back end. 12 kilo down here, so I'll throw this Sarah goes the reel on. And we haven't moved, everything's looking good at the moment. I've got uh, a spare century battery up the back, just in case this century battery gets run down, but uh, it's all looking pretty good. This one here, I charged it overnight, so I've got both batteries charged. And again, the preparation is really important. If you want to fish a spot like this, which could be called dangerous, well, you've got to make sure that you take all the precautions. Okay, let's uh, back through. We'll rig her up. Okay, line all the way through. Now, I haven't used this rod before. But uh, I've definitely used the Saragossa reels. They are fabulous. Really good drag system. And when you're fighting a fish like a drummer who's going to try to get you back in the, in the rocks and the caves, well, you need something super tough. And the Saragossa reels, well priced and great value for money. And I recommend them for any of your sport fish. Drummer is certainly a sport fish. As you'll see, if I hook up, you've really got to work them hard. Okay. Now, yeah, let's have a look. I think I will go for a bobby cook. And what I'll do there is uh, I'll just rig her up straight away. So a stopper knot on it in the in a second and the stopper knot will actually mean that where whatever depth of water I want to fish I can and the stopper knot will sit here the float will run right up to it and so I can vary the depth but uh, 
put that on in a sec. Right at the moment, let's see if we can hurry up this. One second. About a one o size hook which works pretty well. Mustard do a good hook, gamma cats do a good hook. Just want to use one of those little one-o's. Quite strong, you need a strong hook. I'm just going to put one of these split shots down the bottom. That'll mean that the uh, line's going to get down and drift around the bottom. Slide the hook on. Different ways you can do it. I'll just uh, tie it on as I do every other hook. You can put a snell on if you want. Nice and easy. Okay. Okay, so when I cast, basically that's what I'll be casting. Just like that with a piece of uh, peel prawn on or kanji, two of the good baits. But I've got prawn today and uh, what will happen, the float will run all the way up to the stopper and this will sink all the way down to the bottom and stay just above the kelp and above the weed and all the rocks and uh, rubble so hopefully that's how I've got to get it right I'll probably just start shallow and then I'll slowly move it deeper and then hopefully I'll find the right depth where the fish are going to be feeding so that's as simple as that is at the minute now I'll do this stopper knot Fold this in half, not quite in half, but just give yourself a, a bit of a fold, hold it onto the line, grab the long end and run it round about four times, four or five times. Just pinch it there and run it round. Just like that. Now you've got to just put it back through the hole, so through that initial hole you made, back through there, sliver it up, and pull it through. Okay. As you can see, that knot's on there now, and the little bead will come up to that knot and sit there. That's exactly what we're after. Just tighten her up a bit more. And then I can trim her right off. Now, it'll slide up and down the line, as you can see it there. I can oh, slide it down, or slide it up. But you don't want it to slide down and up easily, so you want to be able to make sure that knot is nice and tight. And slip off each end. It'll easily get through your runners. Okay, so when the when the float goes in the water, it'll go up to that stopper knot right there, like that. 
bait will go down to the de desired depth that I want. And we're going to be throwing it right into that foam. So first of all, I'm going to get a couple of handfuls. We're rigged up now. We're going to uh, get some bread in the water. And I want to throw some big bombs. Put them in there. Into that white water. And get the fish all starting to congregate and feed together. Okay. Just grab one of these buckets that you can easily pull out. Put the water in there. use white bread for your not only your burley but your bait because the, the drummer love bread and uh, they'll come out they'll feed on the bread and if you put a nice piece of uh, crust on bend it over feed it on you might get two or three on the actual 1-0 hook and then hurl them in if they're really hungry on the bread the drummer will attack it no problems you get cooked prawns. Cooked prawns work extremely well, but I'll get two baits out of these. And what I'll do, I'll peel off the head, peel off the legs, and I'll mix that up with my bread as well, the bread burley, and throw it in because I'm going to be using prawn. I want to make sure that the fish have got uh, an appetite for, for prawns. So I'm just going to uh, cut these into two baits. The first bait will be going in pretty soon. All right, well, we've talked about the gear. Here we're going to be using. We've uh, shown you the bait, which are these beautiful prawns. Of course, I'm using a 1 0 hook. Prawn baits will go on pretty easily. Just feed it straight on. Just a small amount. Got some keeper hooks on there. So basically that's the bait. And I'm going to move this stopper knot right up on the mono, up to pretty close to where the FG knot is. Just like that. And I'm going to cross it in. to see which way the current's going to be moving. At the moment, there's a fair bit of still water in there, which you like. Okay, well, we've got my bait on. Everything's looking good. We now need a nice long cast. Target species, I'm after a drummer which is black, but this is an impressive fish. Just a female groper, absolutely beautiful. Look at the teeth on it. Look at the coloration around that eye there. Beautiful. What a fish. Big, powerful tail. And they inhabit this sort of coastal country. It's uh, rough and ready, and these guys are tough. Have a look at the teeth in there. You can see what they're they're chomping on. Pretty scary stuff. Got a pair of dentures like that. Where you can see that hook's just got him through the top lip. And the peel prawn. Woo! Great fish. 